We all have questions. We all need answers. It is on this program that we get our answers from the Bible. It's time to Ask the Preacher with Rev. Carl Gallups of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church in Milton, Florida. Welcome to another edition of Ask the Preacher. I'm your host, Mike Bates. With me in the studio, as he is every week, is the pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church in Milton, Florida, Rev. Carl Gallups. Welcome, Carl. Thank you, Mike. It's always great to be here with you. Carl, music is a big part of civilization and culture and entertainment and activity. We have music in our homes, in our cars, on the radio. There's concerts, bands. There's music just about everywhere. There's music in church. My question for you today is, what does the Bible say about music? Well, actually, Mike, the Bible says a lot about music, and I know the question also runs then, are there certain types of music that are evil? What about Christian rock? What about Southern gospel? What about, you know, should we even use instruments in worship? Should we make music in, 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 in our churches? I, I, all of these questions, they just go on and on and on. So yes, it's a great question. It's a timely question. The Bible has a lot to say about it. There are a lot of myths and traditions out there in cultures, in the world, in society and in churches and in religion about music. There are a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings. There are misquoting of scripture and misinterpretation of scripture uh, concerning music. So what a great show this is going to be. We're going to have fun with this. Well, let me just begin by affirming what you just said, Mike. We are musical beings. Now, now stop and think about this for a moment. If there is a God and if we are created in his image, and of course I believe both of those to be true, but just being philosophical here, then it would be God who made us to be musical beings. Now, even people who can't carry a tune in a bucket like music, they at least like to listen to it. Um, they, they have favorite music artists. Um, now, look, what, People say, well, I have no interest in music at all. That's not true. Uh, watch a movie and take all the music track out of it and tell me how good that movie is. You know, we get on elevators and there's music in the elevators. We get in our cars, boom, we punch on a music channel. Uh, you know, we, we watch movies, cartoons, uh, television programs, music background, subtle in the back. Why? Well, because music affects us, Mike. It affects the soul. It moves us, it stirs us, it creates emotion within us. Sometimes we get angry when we hear certain kinds of music. Sometimes we get very docile and peaceful when we hear other kinds of music. Sometimes we cry when we hear certain types of music. Sometimes we get very, very loving when we hear other kinds of music. Music evokes within us a, a, a stirring of our souls and our imaginations and our emotions. I don't understand it all, Mike, but the Bible says we were created that way. Now, it doesn't say that directly about music, but it says we're created in God's image, and we know we are created to be musical beings. Mike, from the Native American Indians to the natives in the deepest, darkest jungles of Africa or the Philippines or the Amazon, they have music. To the most refined cultures of the world, we have music, and it is central to our cultural uh, refinement, music. And Mike, now that we've really stopped and thought about that for a moment, think about this. Think about the oddity of singing. Now, I, I know you might question, why would you use the word odd or oddity? Well, because we are so musical, we take it for granted so much, but have you ever thought about what is singing? Now, that it's odd. It's weird. It's strange. If you just, what would a visitor from another planet who had no musical, uh, no musical being about them at all, if they came to our planet, first of all, if they heard music, they would think, what is that? Secondly, if they watched a human go from talking like we're talking to changing their voice, their vocal inflection, and adding this musical quality to their voice, and they begin to sing, it's a whole different kind of language, if you will. It's, a, it's, it's another voice that we use. It's, we, we change our vocal cords to do something different. Mike, if you think about it at just the, 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 the base gut level, 
It's rather odd. Music and singing. And then oftentimes out of music and singing comes the urge to dance. <laughs> and mm -hmm. to, I mean, what's that about? I mean, if you think about it, Mike, at that level, and we rarely do think about it at this level. Why? Because we take it for granted so much. We just take it for granted that we are musical beings. To one degree or another, we are musical beings. And if you'll think about it, Mike, taken at its very base level, it's all rather odd. So why is it that we're musical beings? What's the origin of singing and dancing and playing instruments? Why is it that so many people, not everybody, but so many people desire to play a musical instrument? Many of those who desire go on to learn how, but there are a lot of people who never learned how, but who desire with all their being and say, oh, I wish I could play the piano. I wish I could play the guitar. I wish I could. Why is that such a part of us? Now, personally, Mike, I, I run into people all the time who say, well, the only instrument I can play is the radio, you know, <laughs> FM or AM. I can, you know, I can play a radio. But, but truly, it, 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 isn't it odd to think about that? That, that, that to say we're musical beings says a lot, as you said in the beginning of the show, elevators, cars. Homes, businesses, movies, TVs, cartoons, worship, church. Now we come to church. What's the central focal point of the act of worship in most churches? Music. Either instrumental and or singing. Mm -hmm. Music. Why? Well, there are commands and scriptures for it to be, but over and above that, it does something. It says something. It creates something. It creates an atmosphere. It creates emotional response. It invokes something from us. Music is powerful, Mike. I said all of that to say this. Music is powerful. Now, let's stop and think about it for a moment. The very first record, historical record, we have of music being used is in the scriptures, and it was used for worship of God by the angels themselves. The book of Job, one of the oldest books we have in the whole Bible, talks about at the creation of the world, at the creation of humankind, the angels were there. And it says, and they sang for joy. They sang about the glory of God. Now, people say, well, that's not music. Yes, it is. Singing is music. And probably instruments were used along with it, since we know there are instruments in heaven from other scriptural verses. And or even if they weren't, uh, this, the very act of singing is music. It's making music with our voices. Our voice is an instrument as well. So, so the, the most ancient record we have of music being used it was used to worship God and to bring glory to God. So I think at its root, Mike, that, that we were created as musical beings because we were created in the image of God, and somehow, for whatever reason, God is musical. I mean, we're created in His image. He, he, music is an act of worship. The changing of our voices to sing is an act of worship, of bringing adoration. This is what the scripture says. It's the oldest and earliest use that we have of record of music and singing. And probably the playing of instruments was all used. One of the most beloved writers of, of, of scripture was King David, who wrote almost all the Psalms. And, and he was an instrumentalist, played the harp, sang, wrote the Psalms. That's what they are, songs. And they are written to music directors and written to use instruments. And, and so, so, so music, Mike, is hugely important to the worship experience, to the human experience. Now, having said all of that, I want to say this. It is my humble opinion that music like sex, is either good or bad. It can either be holy or neutral or perverted, depending upon one's perspective and how it's used. The reason I compare it to sex is simply because God also created sex. God also made us sexual beings. And if we stay within the confines of his word, sex is a wonderful, beautiful thing that, and a gift that God has given for procreation as well as a marriage glue that holds couples together. Music in the same way. We're created not only as sexual beings, but musical beings. And used within a biblical context and framework of understanding, it can bring great joy and can bring great good and can also be used as an act of worship. And guess what? Just like sex can be used within its proper context as an act of joy and entertainment, if you will, so can music as well within its proper context. So it is my opinion that music can be good or bad. Mike, I think some music is, is neutral. And I know there are Christians listening to this show who may 
very much disagree with what I'm going to say. Some of the more legalistic and fundamental uh, of the Christian community would, would say that music, if it's not used in strictly the Christian context, is evil. But Mike, so much music has to do with culture. Uh, you know, the classic, just instrumental, you know, Bach and Beethoven and, 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 and these guys, uh, beautiful music. Um, uh, uh, a lot of songs, uh, fun songs, neutral neither good nor bad. Uh, there are songs about life and love. Uh, in my humble opinion, uh, it, it, they're, they're, they're neutral. They're not, they're not holy. They're not songs of worship, but they're not evil either. But see, Mike, where we cross the line is, is that you and I both know that there is so much music that is evil, that invokes us to sexual immorality, that invokes people to drug use and drug abuse, that it invokes people to violence and hatred and bigotry. And, and, and we know this. We know that music can be used for evil. We know that music can describe evil in a glorified manner, like a lot of country songs do, you know, going to the bar and drinking and running around on my spouse. And, and it's glorified in a musical way. Uh, a lot of rock and roll music, not all of it. You know, rock and roll, I think, is defined by the kind of the beat and the genre, not necessarily by lyrics totally. So a lot of the rock and roll music is 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 in, used in this same way. And so that's where the problem comes in, Mike, with Christians is, gosh, how do we decide? How do we know what music is what? Well, here's something interesting I want to point out that I think a lot of Christians have never heard this before. And you're going to learn something from the scriptures. This is very interesting to me. We go to the book of Ezekiel. It opens in the first chapter, and Ezekiel had a vision. And he says, I saw at the river Kibar, that's where he was when God gave him this vision. He said, I saw the throne of God, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, and I saw four living creatures around this throne. And he describes them in great detail. Obviously, they are some type of angelic being, a creation of God. When you get to Ezekiel chapter 10, he says, and these four living creatures were identified to me as cherubim. Cherubim. Now that's cherubim and seraphim. We hear those terms in the scriptures. And you know what we find about cherubim, Mike? In Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14, we discover that Satan was a cherubim. He was a cherub. He was part of the cherubim. He was a cherub. Ezekiel 28 gives this unbelievable description of the glory and the power and the beauty and the wisdom and the intelligence of, of Lucifer, one of God's first and greatest creations that had free will. And he is described as a holy cherub who was a guardian of the throne of God. Now, the word guardian doesn't mean God needs protection, but it means that he, they, these cherub, their assignment was to, to declare the glory of God. When we get to Revelation, Mike, in chapter 4 and 5, we discover that the cherub, the cherubim, and the elders surrounding the throne each were given a harp, and they sang songs of worship and praise, and they played instruments. Mike, do you know what this means? It means one of the first of God's creations, Lucifer, who later fell, was the chief musician of the universe. Mike, that explains why music, like sex, has been totally perverted by Satan and used against the creation of God. Satan himself was the chief musician musician of the universe. He was at the throne of God. His responsibility was to declare the wonders of God in music and in song uh, uh, for, for all of the universe and all of the beings who approach God's throne. So Mike, in my humble opinion, yes, music can be used for evil. It can go right to the heart of people. This is why Satan uses it so powerfully, like he uses other things, sex, alcohol, drugs, etc., to alter our mind state so that we then can bring uh, dishonor to God and to his word. Music is powerful. Now, does all music have its origins in Satan? No, it has its origins in God. But evil music does it have its origins in Satan? Yes, the chief musician of the universe. And we should not be surprised then that we struggle with, with this. What kind of music should we listen to? So there's good music. There's bad music. There's holy music. There's evil music. And there's neutral music, I think. Fair enough. We've got to take a break now. But when I get back, I want you to kind of define that a little bit more. What is it that can make music evil? Is it the music or is it the lyrics? Okay. 
And I'm real curious to hear what the answer is. I would love to give my opinion on that. We'll get it when Ask the Preacher continues. <laughs> 